Hello, welcome. Welcome to our third video on how to build a stair elevation. And ultimately, our ultimate goal here is to get a 2x12 that we can cut with a pattern on it that we can uh, allow us to build the stairs that we want to build. What we've done in previous videos is we determined uh, what our uh, parameters were in regard to the tread and our riser height and other dimensions. In our second video, we went ahead and started copying these, and we can go ahead and finish this by doing that. But I want to show you another way, and that's uh, using the array command in order to finish this. So to do that, we have to complete a couple things. Let's go ahead and delete some of those uh, stair uh, elements that we had in there, those stair blocks, and go down here to our very basic unit, and we're going to draw a path. Path is going to extend much beyond this, but uh, we're going to establish the pattern of that path by going to the endpoint of one of the riser uh, where the riser stops and starts to the endpoint of the second one that goes up from there. That's the first step. Second step is draw a line way, way out here and uh, the hinterlands. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this line, that uh, reference line that we drew, that path line for the array, and we're going to extend it to this line. We could conceivably just grab the, the end point of uh, one of our grips there and drag it up there. But the problem with doing that is it can get off square. And we may not be able to get that uh, quite correct. So we're going to do it with a little bit more control and use the extend command. Extend command is underneath the trim command. If you go up here, look at what it's asking for. Select the objects, which is our extend reference. Enter. And then the object we want to extend. We don't want to click down here on that line. We want to click up here on that line and extends it up there. Desire here is to try to make that path line longer than what we need for our stairs in order for the array command to work out right. The array command is a little bit on the clunky side, but if you follow all the right steps, you might, find, might be able to find it uh, re relatively useful. So let's go to the array command. There's three different arrays. We have a rectangular array, which lays things out kind of like a checkerboard. There's a polar array, which will arrange things in a circular manner about a, about a base point. And then there's a path array. The path array is the one we're going to use. So click on path array. And you have to follow these steps very carefully. Select our objects is what it's asking. Select our uh, stair block. Select the path curve. Now, now be careful with this. After you're done selecting your path curve, it's going to, uh, you don't have to press the space bar or the enter key. Because if you do that, it enters into a different sub uh, command, and uh, you might get a result that uh, may not be desirable. So, as soon as you're done uh, selecting the path curve, it's going to ask you how many elements. So, it's path curve, and then the elements, it defaults to two, but let's go ahead and type in 16, because we want 16 total. And if you just press enter again, it would stop there. But what we need to do is arrange this so that the stairs land uh, in the exact position that we want them to. So what it's asking for is, uh, if you look at the command, if, yeah, if you look at the command line, specify the distance between the items along the path. It's automatically starting down here at zero, and what we want to do is extend it up to here, and that's going to be our next stop. Click up here. It's the end of our pattern, and then exit allows us to get out of that. Once the array is done, you can go ahead and uh, modify it just by clicking on it. It gives you all sorts of uh, different uh, options here. We won one unit and one unit over here, 16 total, and uh, you know the various offsets and other parameters that kind of go along with it. We're not going to get into that right now. But uh, once you're done with that, let's go ahead and dimension it. Let's go to our dimension layer and take a look at that. Just to make sure we have that dimension right, we're going to go to the very bottom floor to the second floor, and that should, as we're anticipating, read 8 foot 11 inches. More in the next video.